everyone, this is Gary D. Tonincourt from MoreThanASnapshot.com. Today I wanted to talk to you about customizing the buttons on the Canon 5D Mark IV. There are a lot of options for customizing these buttons that can make your photography faster and easier. And I'm going to talk about some of those now. I'm going to talk about some of the things that you can customize. Number one, there are three custom settings, C1, C2, and C3. So you can completely customize whole profiles for how you want the camera to shoot. So for example, you could set up one profile for the common settings you use for shooting portraits, or another one for the common settings you use for shooting sports, and another one for the settings you typically like to use for shooting at night. So there is a lot of ability to customize everything about the camera. I'll probably do a separate video about that, Today I wanted to talk more about customizing the individual buttons and what things that uh, you might find useful. One of the first things that I changed was, normally after you take a picture, it will display the picture right away on the back of the screen. So I kind of found that to be a little bit distracting, especially doing certain types of photography like night photography it can be a problem so I turned that off I don't want to see the picture automatically pop up but I do want an easy way for the picture uh, to be played and sometimes it's hard especially at night to find a button like one of these small buttons on the side so I actually set the playback to be the set button so now when I hit set it will play a photo or, or a video whatever was last recorded right. um, also, there is a new button on the Mark IV, this little button right here. I set that button to be ISO. And a lot of times I've been using auto ISO with this camera, but the nice thing is even with auto ISO, you can press the ISO button and change the ISO even when you're in auto. So that gives me even more flexibility. So if I'm in auto and I don't like the choice that it made, I can manually override it and pick what I want. Also, I use back button focusing, which is uh, fairly popular today. Uh, there are a lot of advantages to taking the focusing away from the front button and putting it in the back. And the nice thing about this camera is you can assign these back buttons to do different things and focus in totally different ways. So it's, it's pretty amazing the amount of uh, you know changes to the way you could focus with uh, these two buttons so I'll show you how to do that the other thing that I changed was using the multifunction button to start and stop recording video so when I'm shooting video I don't always want to hit the the regular shutter button to start the video I can just hit that little button to start and stop my video so now I want to go into the menu system and show you how that's done so to change the assignment of these buttons, you simply go to the Custom Functions tab, which is the second to the last. And then on page three, down at the bottom, we have something that says Custom Controls. So in the Custom Controls, when I click on that, the first one that comes up is to set my back button focusing or to take away focusing from the front button. So. When I click on that front first button, I'm going to move it off of the first one, which is metering and autofocus, and just put it on the second one, which is just metering. I only want this front button to meter and then take the picture. Also remember, every time you work in this menu, you have to hit set to choose your options. If you don't hit set, it won't actually apply the change that you've made. Okay, coming down, the next one says AF on. This is to customize the AF on button, which I do want to focus. So I'm going to, in this case, choose metering and autofocus to be my choice, which is the very first one. Now, here's the great thing about this, where you can get into even more detail about how it focuses. It says right here, if you hit the info button, you can see more detail and make more changes. So if I hit info, 
I have four other things here I can change about how it focuses. So in the first one, it says AF start position. I can choose manually selected AF point, or I can choose registered AF point. I want the manually selected point. The second option says um, AI servo AF characteristics. This is where you would choose what case you would use. For example, they have case one, versatile multi-purpose setting. Case two, continue to track subjects ignoring possible obstacles. Case three, instantly focus on subjects and suddenly enter the AF point area. So in this case, I want case three, I shoot a lot of wildlife. I wanna quickly be able to focus on what I'm doing. So I'm going to choose case three. The next one, AF operation. I want AI servo because I want it to continuously focus. And then AF area, of all the AF area choices, I'm gonna pick spot AF because on this one, I wanna have very precise control over where I focus. And I think that one will be the quickest and fastest and most accurate for focusing. Now, I can return to the beginning of the menu. And the next button is for adjusting the asterisk button, which typically does um, focus exposure lock. Now, I don't need it to do exposure lock. So when I customize this one, instead of choosing the first option, I'm gonna choose autofocus and metering, just like I did for the button uh, AF on. But when I go into the more info, when I hit info, Here's where I'm gonna make a difference. I'm gonna leave the first three the same as I did the last one. But for the AF area selection, I'm gonna choose a much wider selection. In this case, I chose auto select AF over the whole range of autofocus points. That's because now, if I wanna focus on something that's not moving very much and I wanna be very accurate, I can just press with my thumb the AF on button or if I have a fast moving subject like maybe like a flying bird, I can hit the second button, the asterisk button instead. And now it will switch from just having that one single point to having all the points available. And I may have a quicker uh, ability to focus on my subject. So that is something very unique. It's probably the only camera that does this at this point that you can assign totally different methods of focusing to each button. And I think that that's a tremendous benefit. So that's how I've set up my autofocus. And like I said, not to mention, you could customize that, you know, three times more because you have these custom settings on the dial. All right, so that's focusing. Um, let's take a look back in the menu at some of the other options. Uh, the next one is depth of field preview button. That is this button down here at the bottom. You could customize that to be something else. I don't use it for anything. I rarely use depth of field preview, so I'm just gonna leave it just the way it is. Uh, lens AF on or off. Um, I don't change that one. I don't really use that one. On the next column, it says uh, multifunction. That's this little button up here at the top. And as, as I said, I've changed that to be starting and stopping video. And I like that better than having to hit the um, shutter button. The next one is uh, the set button. And I have changed that to play back your last image. I find it much easier, especially when working in the dark. I, sometimes it's hard to hit the right button. So just to hit that button, it's very easy for me to bring my thumb over and hit it and see the last image that I took. The next two are um, the dials, and I left them as the default. So this one is controlling the shutter speed. The back dial is controlling the aperture when shooting. Then we have the multi-controller. I use this and it's set by default to control where the AF point is located. I like that. You can just look in here and use this little joystick to move your AF point anywhere you want. It's quick and easy and um, that's a good option. 
And then the very last one is the new button. And as I mentioned, I've set that one to be ISO because it's a nice quick way to find where your ISO is instead of having to remember, oh, it's the second button in. And then especially again, if you're working in the dark, you'd have to try to feel, okay, which button is the right one here. I could just hit this button and I know I'm on ISO. So that is how I customize all of those settings for the basic buttons. Now, I just wanted to also mention that you can customize the quick menu. So I'll just quickly show you where that is. And I'm probably not really going to do it in this video. It would be a much longer thing and I don't want to mess up my quick menu in, in the process. So this one is under the wrench and it's on page three and it's called custom quick control. When you go into that, it says start editing layout, revert layout to default or clear all items. So if you wanted to make changes to that custom menu, you'd have to start editing layout. And then it asks you if you wanted to add an option, remove an option or select and, continue and confirm or set and confirm. So that's how you can customize that menu. So it may not be the most customizable camera out there, but there are some very key features that you can customize that make it very handy and very easy to use. So I hope you find that useful. Please let us know in the comments what you like to assign your buttons for, and we'll see you next time. This has been Gary D. Tonicourt from more than a snapshot.com.